We're delighted and excited that you came to worship with us this morning under the umbrella of Greater Burnett Church, hashtag Burnett Everywhere. Listen, we invite you to worship God as we give him glory, honor, and praise. Thank you. You could have gone anywhere to any other service. We're just happy to have you here with us. It's a new season. It's a new year. It's a new day. And it's new worship right here. Greater Burnett, the church that still burns with heavenly fire.
has come and is now when the true worshiper shall worship the Father. The Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then will I bring to my holy mountain, saith God, and make them joyful in my house. For mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. David said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Come on, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It's he that have made us, my God. And not we ourselves. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pastor. Into it and its gates with thanksgiving. Into its courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And bless his name. And bless his name. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth and to all generations. The word of the Lord is blessed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, as we enter your gates with thanksgiving, hallelujah, in your courts with praise. We magnify your holy and righteous name, oh God, for you are God and you are Savior, and we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to see this day. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your tender, loving care. Lord, look upon your people today. Bless this service with your Holy Ghost power. Oh, Father God, you say you stand at the door and knock. But we welcome you in this place, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our hearts and in this service, oh God. Bless the man of God, oh Father God, with anointing power. Bless his people all over this land, all over this world. The men, women, boys, and girls can be saved. Oh, Father God, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your holy righteous name and we give you all the glory, all the ed praises in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.
somebody felt like having church this morning. Right on it. One Sunday morning. You got up. Just for me. I can't forget. I won't forget. I refuse to forget. What you done? I, 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 what you done? Yes, sir. Oh, he been good. Oh, he been kind. Oh, he been merciful. Oh, what you done? Oh, what you done? What you done? Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you remember, let me see you clap your hand. If you remember, let me see you clap your hand. Has the Lord been good? Ah! you done for me oh what you done what you done oh, what I... yeah 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 now if you remember I just want you to give him a little praise right there. If you remember, I want you to give him a little hallelujah right there. If you remember, I want you to give him a little thank you, Jesus. If you remember how good he been to you, and if you don't remember, I want to tell you one thing. He woke you up. Ah, he woke you up. Ah, he woke you up right on in this morning. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 Oh, yes! Oh, yes! All right, all right, all right. Woo! Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Woo! Oh, yes! If, you, if you're not too mean, just tell somebody. You ain't got to touch them. Just tell somebody right in the comments. I still remember. Ah, I still remember. I still remember. This is the church. This is the church. That's still burning with heavenly fire. Sinners are caught in Christ's spiritual net. We don't have amnesia over here. He's brought us all the way. He's brought us all the way. I wish I had some folk that know God brought you. Just wave your hand if you know God brought you. 
if you know God brought you. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Make a joyful noise this morning. That's what Elder asked you to do. I'm going to ask you to do it again. Make a joyful noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. God bless you. God bless you. We invite you. 16801, this is our cyber sanctuary. This is our virtual worship experience. COVID can't kill my praise. The pandemic can't kill my praise. I've got a praise on the inside. Yes, I do. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless each and every one of you. This is the Greater Burnett Church. Whether you're watching via Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. Whether you're tuned in to WMKM 1440 AM. This is the church that is still burning. We're yet on fire. God is in control. We invite you to worship with us at any time every Sunday at 11 a.m. We invite you to any of our activities for this week. This week, all week, all week will be a week of prayer. All week, this will be a week of prayer. We will not have any study this week. We're praying all this week. And we invite you at 7 a.m. and at 6 p.m. to join with us on our family conference line for prayer every day, 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. We invite you to join us for prayer. We'll be praying all week. Our prayer warriors will be in place, led by our moderator, Evangelist Poindexter. And we invite you to pray with us this week as we are going to God in prayer all week thank God for all of you that come on we pray that you will continue to come on um, evangelist point Dexter will be making sure that our prayer goes forth every day as I take a few days to rest myself amen amen I'm not the bionic bunny. I have to do that too. I have to take a few days and rest myself. And so I'm going to take a few days to rest myself. And Evangelist Point Dexter will have our scheduled morning and evening. And those of you that will be called upon, thank you. We'll be praying every day. We certainly invite you uh, not only to join us in prayer. But we also invite you to join us uh, in worship every Sunday via our virtual platform, via our radio ministry, via our uh, church website. Tell others, like, tag, and share. Let others know that the Greater Burnett Church of Detroit, Michigan is on and on fire for the Lord. It is on and on fire for the Lord the Lord. Certainly we invite you to the ministry of giving. We invite you. We have five ways to give and we ask that you would continue your support through tithes and offering through seeds of sacrifice as we are a ministry uh, yet having expense even in a pandemic. They did not cut off our bills because COVID came. Praise God. <laughs> and you know that at your own house. Amen. So please by all means continue to support us financially can give five ways, give the five cash app. You can give on our church website. You can give by mailing all tithes and offering to the Greater Burnett Church of Detroit 16801 Schoolcraft, Detroit, Michigan 48227. And then we invite you also to come by any Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's prayer time and we always need to pray 
The Bible says that man should always pray and not faint. And so we're asking each and every one of you, whoever your prayer requests, whoever you're praying for, whatever your request may be, I'm not going to call anything today. I just want you to know whatever it is, God knows. Whoever it is, God knows. And as we come to this moment of prayer, know that God not only knows evangelists, he's able. He's able to do just what he said he would do. He's able, Elder, to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Lord, I want to live for thee. Everybody, Lord. Lord. Bless you today. Bless you, Sister Cecile Giles. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Kathy Clark. Thy spirit be with me. We're praying for you today. Whoever, wherever. Oh, and it's saving power. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Keep my heart. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying, we're praying. Keep my tongue. My Lord. Whoever you are, wherever you are. Whatever name you write, whatever name you call out, whatever situation you're calling out. God is able today. I want you to trust the Lord. I want you to trust him today. As we pray, I want you to trust him. I want you to lean on him. I want you to depend on him. He's able, I tell you. Yes, sir. Keep my soul, yes. Keep my soul. Oh. <laughs> Keep my tongue. He's able, I said. I, 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 I. Keep me, keep me, keep me, keep me. Yes, Lord. Oh, this 28th day, our Father, this 28th day of February, we come saying thank you. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion, for your forgiveness. Thank you, our Father. For all the many blessings that thou has bountifully bestowed upon us. We come in a most sincere and humble manner because we need you. We can't make it without you. We pray that you create in us clean hearts, clean hearts, God. And renew in us right spirits. We ask that you would forgive us of sins of omission and commission. And we ask that you would wash us clean even right now. Blot out our transgressions. Purge us with hyssop. Have mercy on us according to your loving kindness and tender mercy. We admit and we confess this morning that we have sinned and come short of your glory. But we thank you for the blood of Jesus that is with us, on us even right now 
Our Father, we pray this morning, not for ourselves only in a selfish manner, but we pray for this entire world, this entire nation. We pray for every state, every city, every township, every village, every suburb, every rural area. We pray for these united yet divided states. We pray for our president, vice president, house of representatives. We pray for our senate leaders. We pray for leadership, governmental and secular. And we pray for the leadership of the body of Christ. We pray for all spiritual leaders. We pray for every church open in your name. We pray for every pastor, every preacher. We pray, oh God, for every sick individual. You know their names and their locations. We pray for every shut-in individual, every bereaved, every incarcerated individual. We pray for a touch this morning that only you can give. There's no touch like your touch. Can't nobody do us like you do. We pray this morning, our Father, for this local assembly. We pray for the Greater Burnett family. We pray, oh God, for every individual that's worshiping with us, even at this very moment. Now, Lord, we come because we need you. Sin is running rampant. We need you. Trouble is on every side. We need you in all of our affairs. We need you. And we can't make it without you. Father, we come asking you to bless us corporately and then we come in the name of jesus asking you to bless us personally oh lord somebody under the sound of my weak voice don't know what's gonna happen They've been praying and crying. Seem like a change won't come. But Father, I know you can change things. Oh, yes, you can. Father, we pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for lawyers and judges. We pray for teachers and principals. In the name of Jesus, that you would have your way in our world today. Father, we need more of you. Father, we need your Holy Spirit. We need your holy power. Enable us this morning. Equip us this morning. Empower us this morning. Revive us this morning. Huh? Restrengthen us this morning. Huh? Rejuvenate us this morning. Huh? Refresh us this morning. Huh? Lord, we need you. Huh? Lord, we need you. Huh? We need you huh? in our homes. Huh? We need you huh? on our jobs. Huh? We need you. Huh? in our government we need you in our families we need you in our marriages we need you and we won't make it unless you show up oh please sir show up on our behalf thank you for what you already done Thank you for what you're doing right now. But oh Lord, 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 o
God, I want to thank you because the future is looking mighty bright. Thank you. I have hope that everything, I have faith that everything, I have peace that everything, I have joy and your joy is our strength. Strengthen us right now. Bless us right now. Right now, Lord. Please, sir. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Anybody ever called him? Anybody ever called him? If you call on Jesus, <laughs> he will, he will, he will. Ah, he will, he will. Yes. Bless you, saints of God and if there be any sinner, man, woman, boy, or girl today is a good day to accept Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior he'll make your life brand new He'll take good care of you. <laughs> Today's a good day. Any of you that are saved, I just want you to write, I'm glad I'm saved. Just say that, I'm glad I'm saved. Blessings to you all. We are, we have persevered through this, what it, our doctor calls a severe <coughs> sinus infection. We have persevered because our power comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray with us. Continue to pray for us as we continue to minister and even as we take a few days, Dr. Coleman, as we take a few days to rest. Pray for us. This is a great year ahead of us, and we're in the midst of it right now, Elder Johnson. God is doing great things at the Greater Burnett Church. I said God is doing great things at the Greater Burnett Church. God is doing great things. Somebody say great things. Great things at the Greater Burnett Church. Bring me a white dress. I want to. We are going to rest. And I want to thank God for all of our ministers who work diligently with us in the pulpit ministry to ensure the work goes on. Amen. On next Sunday night, we'll be here in our virtual Holy Communion service, the third one this year. And I want you to know that every time we gather on Sunday night at five o'clock, the Holy Spirit gives us a most powerful encounter that we can say, did not our hearts burn? when we leave this place. So please be mindful of that. The hour is far spent. I'm going to ask Sister Cooper to come. I'll clean this here.
And the reason why I'm asking her to come is because I'm asking her to come because her husband is going to preach this morning. And uh, go right here. Her husband is going to preach this morning. Minister Eddie Cooper, one who the Lord has sent to us to be a blessing to us. He and his lovely wife are such a blessing to us, even in the few months they've been with us. They're such a blessing. I'm honored of the Lord that they're here. I'm honored of the Lord that they're here, and but our relationship goes back way before they got here. Matter of fact, I was at their wedding, and I thank God for that, and I thank God that uh, Minister Cooper, you all have heard him in the past, but you have not heard him as one of the greater Burnett preachers. <laughs> yeah. You've heard him in other arenas and areas, but there's, he's a greater Burnett preacher now, and I, it does make a difference. <laughs> it does make a difference. Uh, <laughs> God is good to us. After Sister Carlethea Cooper would have sang for us, the next speaking voice you will hear will be that of our preacher for the morning, Minister Eddie Cooper, Jr., my brother, my associate minister, my friend, Minister Cooper, after his lovely wife shall have sang for him. Amen, amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today with all my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen and to sing, be able to sing and lift the Lord's name up, amen, with you all on behalf of my husband. I'm just so happy to be here, amen. We've got a destination in our view. The road may be bumpy getting there, but we're pressing through. We will enjoy this journey, no matter come what may, we'll become better and stronger and wiser every day you see we've got a vision and a purpose a divine destiny it may not look like it right now, but if faith ain't what we see, oh, it is the things we hope for, believing that it will come, and no matter how. We know God's will shall be done. You see, his will is that we prosper. His will is that we win. His will is that we fight on. His will is that we live. Oh, his will is that we prosper. Oh, his will is that we win. Oh, his will is that we fight on. His will is that we live. Oh, because he gave us what we needed 
when he gave us his son. He gave us hope and a future. He gave us the greatest love. And so it makes me say, I thank God the Father who woke us up today. I thank God the Son that died on one Friday, but got up early one Sunday morning with all power of heaven and earth. Y'all know who I'm talking about. This is a church that's burning with heavenly fire. So once you hear the name of Jesus, it should be someone out there that should be able to just stand up on their feet and just start giving him. I'm sorry, I, I was supposed to start off calm, but I started to think back over my life and how good he has been to me. And all I can say is I will. Yeah. My, 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 my. Well, bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I thank God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Mm, that resides in this place. I thank God for the greatest church on this side of heaven. Used to come by and visit, but now I'm a member, so I can testify right along with you. The greatest church on this side of heaven, the greater Burnett. The greater, greater Burnett Baptist Church, where the angel of this house, my pastor, my brother, my friend, beloved, the pastor Ryan Patrick Johnson. Okay, y'all did, didn't hear me. Let me start this all over. I thank God the Father who woke us up today. I thank Jesus who died on the cross. I thank God the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for my church home. But let's give God some praise for our pastor. Dr. Ryan Patrick Johnson. Amen. 
He is a gift from God. And I bless God's holy name for him. To all the great commentators of the gospel here. To this amazing mu music staff and to this amazing dynamic pastor, chorale, choir, whatever they want to call themselves. To my mother, sister, Mary Cooper, who's watching right now, to my, she sure enough is, to my father, who is watching as well, Deacon Eddie Cooper, senior, but last but not least, my boo, my bae, my caramel, frat pan. God bless me with it. this woman. I've been without her for two days now while she was going away, so I'm so glad. I feel like a kid in the candy store. Y'all catch that in Songs of Solomon. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God for my, my best Bible, best Bible. I thank God for my wife, Sister Carlethea Cooper. But I definitely don't want to prolong the time, the time. Oh, I'm not singing an amen. Amen. My wife already did that for us. If I, I can make a joyful noise, but it'll be in Z flat. Amen. But let us turn to a very familiar passage of scripture found in the Old Testament. We're going to read Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. I'll be using this in entire chapter amen I'll be using this entire chapter but just for your reading we're going to read out loud I'm going to read to you out loud from the New King James Version Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh the great city and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish as he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Verse number five, then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God with a little G and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down and was fast asleep. On this great getting up morning, I would like to preach from the simple thought, I have to let you go. I have to let you go. The story of Jonah is a very interesting uh, Bible story. This story has been preached and taught many a times. Most of you who have read your Bible at least once or twice know the story that God gave Jonah an assignment and Jonah, just like many of us, has, decided to do the opposite. I've heard some great commentators of the gospel preach messages like the fertility of running from God, living in rebellion, or the fishy rescue. Many have preached great messages, dissect the text, exegete, and gave great revelation to this text, giving great examples of what would happen when you run away from God and your calling over your life. But like I said just a minute ago, on this great getting up morning, I want to speak from the captain in the sailor's point of view. I want to speak from the thought, I have to let you go. The captain and the sailors that Jonah was sailing with found themselves in a storm. They were caught up in the middle of a bad situation that they had nothing really to do with. The Bible indicates that the only reason that they was going through the storm was because Jonah was on the ship. 
Could it be, could it be that some of the turmoil in your life might be caused by some Jonas we have allowed on our ships, our friendships, our kinships, our boo ships. Yeah, I made that word up. Our relationships, our fellowships. Now, ain't that some ship? S-H-I-P. Now this, now this is by no means an attempt to legitimize blaming others for the situations in your life, but it's merely to point out the fact that many of those situations only exist because of the presence of certain people in your life. Now you may ask, why can't I legitimately blame other people for the situations in our lives? Greater Burnett, y'all ask some good questions over here. It's because we have allowed those people in our lives. We are the ones that gave them a boarding pass, a permission slip to be in our lives. So if there is any turmoil in your life, it may be a good idea to take inventory of the people that you have allowed in your life. You may still ask, how can I tell if these people are some Jonas, how, how, how do you know to tell them to get off of my ship? Well, that's a good question as well. Let's go back to the Bible and learn some lessons from the captain and the sailors. Point number one, point number one is you need to check their boarding pass. You didn't put your Bibles away, did you? Verse number three says, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down the Job, but found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. These men didn't realize who they was allowing on their ship. Note the biblical text reveals that the ship was going in the opposite direction that Jonah was supposed to be going. My brothers and sisters, there are some people in your life, some things in your life who you who really didn't intend to go in your direction, but they are just along for the ride. Come on, y'all can talk to me in here. They made no real contributions, but we still allow them on board. They weren't even going in the same direction that we was going in. Come on, you know these people who don't quite fit in, but they make superficial adjustments just to be on board. Jonah, he paid the fare and immediately went down into the hull of the, hull of the ship. The Jonas in our life are silent non-participating, non-revealing people in our life. They know something about you. But watch this. You really don't know anything about them. They, they know, they know, they know about you. You don't know nothing about them. They are the ones who are always taken from the relationship while never making a meaningful contribution. Guess what, Greater Burnett? I'm not here to give and them Negroes is not here to take. Something is wrong with the picture. If I have been the constant supplier for some Negroes and Negros that wasn't even supposed to be in my life in the first place, all the trouble that they were about to face could have been avoided if they never let Jonah on board. And I wish I had some witnesses in here. I guess you never been through some things. I guess you never had no friends that did some things to you. I guess you never had no haters in your life. I guess you never had no people in your life that slandered and dragged your name in the mud. I guess you never had no kids that act up. I guess you don't know who Pookie and Ray Ray is, but guess what? I just share a little bit of my life. It's been some people in my life that I just had to tell them I have to let you. All of this trouble, all of this trouble could have been avoided in the first place. Prevention is better than the cure. Let me, let me say that again. Y'all didn't hear me. Prevention is better than the cure. 
so many times we allow people into our lives or some things in our lives before we fully know if the Lord was involved in letting them come into our lives. I hope you did a survey over your life for these 28 days of sacrifice and consulted the Lord about some people in your life. Come on now, why would you go through 2020 hell in the year 2021? God is doing some great things and yes, he is in control, but it is us sometimes that allow some storms to roll into our life because we don't know how to let some people go. Guess what? You are not Captain America. Your job is not to save anybody. That's why Jesus died on yonder's cross. Let me go ahead and be Baptist for a minute. He died on one Friday, but got up early Sunday morning with all power. See, that is called saving right there. It is not your job to save anybody. That's why you got to do some surveying in your life. And remember that prevention is the best cure for Point number two, point number two, since everybody is sleeping. Let me talk about, let me talk about some people for a minute. Point number two, when people sleep on you, don't fight to keep them. When people sleep on you, don't fight to keep them. You still got your Bibles out, right? This is a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Verse number five says, then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God with a little g, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. Now, before I argue this point, let me point out that Jonah was down in the ship and he went to sleep. He even slept through this dangerous storm. Some jokers in your life will sleep through your storms. When you are going through whatever you're going through, they are mostly detached, uninterested, otherwise unavailable. Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. These people can be physically separated and emotionally disconnected. They are not interested in or concerned about anything you're going through or what you're dealing with. Anytime you need some help, anytime you're going through some rough situations, they seem to be too busy. But they're not too busy to subtweet anything that you said. They're not, they not too busy to gossip about you. They're they not too busy to talk about you. But as soon as you need some help, them Negroes start fleeing. Oh, y'all never heard of no roaches, right? Roaches like to play when it's dark, but as soon as the light come on, they start to... Y'all better... See, I know y'all bougie over here. I know, I know y'all live out in the suburbs. Y'all never lived in the city of Detroit. But when the roaches... The, these people are just like the roaches in our life. As soon as some trouble start to come, they start to run and flee, leave you high and dry, jumping off like rats on a ship. They don't have time to help you. But, somebody say but. I can't hear very well. Somebody say but. When the shoe is on the other foot, they are like the cousins who, sh who used to show when the world was open, they show up to the cookout. Not with any food to bring, but they'll show up with their own carryout containers. See, I don't need people who only want to be around when the times is good. I, I don't need people that want to be around when I got some money in my pocket, when I'm smelling a little good, when I have on my Prada Amber or I have on some good shoes on or I wear my good. See, I don't need them type of people to be around. I believe that Dr. Johnson hinted on this last week. I can do bad all by myself. 
if you can't stay around when the times are bad, guess what, baby? I don't need you. I don't want you. It's time for you to leave. It's time for you to go. Matter of fact, see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile, peace up, A-Town. I got to go. We try to fix our problems and situations. We end up throwing out all the wrong things. We will throw away our education for some Negro that don't even like you, but only around because you got your stimulus check. I'm sorry, I didn't come down nobody out. You know, these people that you had to make some, some changes in your life just to keep them, or you had to let go of some good friends just to keep this person around because they, they didn't have any confidence in themselves. They, they had low self-esteem. And anytime you was around any other successful people and they still living in their mama basement, they wanted to. To drag you down. They wanted to keep you down. And as long as you kept them around, you end up throwing out all of the wrong things. I don't know. I don't know all the captain, all, all that the captain and the sailors lost in this effort, but I do know this. The person that was sleep was their problem, not the things that they were throwing overboard. Y'all missed that. The person that was sleep was the problem, not the things that they was throwing that they was throwing overboard. They started throwing overboard some things, but the person that was sleep on them was sleeping real good. That means the storm that was in your life once you was going through them financial situations, once your mama and daddy passed away, when you needed someone to get the prayer wheel turning, they didn't have anything to say. So you start doing a survey, getting rid of all these things, but it was just that one isolated. that was sleep on you, that didn't really know you, that wanted to talk about you, didn't even know your middle name, but they always had your name in their mouth. They always seemed to know your favorite color. They always seemed to know everything. Yeah. Point number three, let me keep moving. Point number three, realize why the storms are in your life. Verse number 10, then the men were exceedingly afraid. And he said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. These men did a personal examination of what was going on. They pulled straws, they did everything, and they cried out to their guys. Then they confronted Jonah to see if he was the cause of the storm. Too many times, people just keep riding through the storm with you, and you need to get rid of them. You will not have perfect peace until those things that need to be removed are removed. You need to do a survey in your life and understand that these people even have the audacity to tell you that I'm not supposed to be in your life anyway. I'm not good enough to be around you. I'm not strong enough to be around you. But then inside of you, because you got such a good heart, because you are just so loving. You say, oh, I can keep you around because I can turn that woman into a housewife. I, 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 I can keep you around. I can, I can turn that no good Negro into some kind of CEO of a company. I can do all these things, but can I tell you the problem with that? You telling yourself what you can do, but nowhere in there did you say what the Lord can do. Nowhere in there have you consulted the Lord in this situation. Nowhere in there have you seen that has the Lord really placed these people in your life. You need to be like these men in these texts and say, why have you done this? This storm in my life was not here until I let you in my life. I was not going through all this hell and high water before you came in. Why have you done this? And then you have to tell them, I have to let you go. Point number four, don't work to keep the Jonas in your life. Verse number 13, nevertheless, the men rode hard to land, but they could not, 
for the sea continued to grow more temperous against them. It is amazing. Even after these captain and sailors realized that Jonah was the problem, they worked hard to keep him on board. If God tells you to get rid of something, guess what? Get rid of it. The Bible declares in, in Proverbs 21 and 30 in the New Living Translation, it says, no human wisdom or understanding or plan can stand against the Lord. That means no, none of your wisdom, none of your understanding, none of your plan can stay against the Lord. None of those things can stand against the Lord because the Lord is the one that gave you the strength to fight on anyway. You these people revealed themselves to you. These people told you they was the reason for your storm. But instead of getting rid of them, you're just like these men and try to row as hard as you can to get back to land. You can do a million things. But until you obey the voice of the Lord, there is no peace. There is no joy. There is no hope. There is no strength. There is no wisdom. There is no understanding. There is no end to the storm until you obey the Lord. I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart and lean not. That's a hard scripture to follow. See, it's not, it's, the hard part is not trusting the Lord. The hard part for most of us is, is to lean not to our own understanding. You thought it was good to keep these people. I understand all that, but you are supposed to trust the Lord with all of your heart. Get rid of them. Point number five, in order to get your life back on course, you have to let them go. Verse number 15, so they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. And then finally, we find out an amazing thing here. As soon as they threw Jonah overboard, the sea calmed. It was Jonah himself who was the cause of this storm. Because Jonah was attempting to flee from the presence of the Lord, he put innocent people at risk because of his presence on the boat. Be, be aware of letting people into your life, then getting caught up in all of their drama which had nothing to do with you. The cemetery is full of people who are filling an early grave because they allow certain people into their lives and they got caught up in somebody else's storm. Many jails are populated with people who made the mistake of letting the wrong person get on board of their ship. Then they got caught up in Jonah's storm. Whoever you allow in your life, remember their baggage comes with them. Be careful that you don't suffer the collateral damage of getting caught up in their storms. When I was a teenager, whenever I would tell my parents about a new friend, the first thing they would ask me is who are their people? Knowing their folks was a good indication of their character. Every now and then, I would meet someone, and my mother would tell me I didn't need to associate or be friends with that person because my mother knew that that person was a Jonah. We all would do well to check the passenger list of our various ships to see if we have some of these people in our life. And if we do, it'll be wise to quote what Queen Elsa said in Frozen and let it go. Today we send a text message to all of our haters, our manipulators, our users, and tell them, I have to let you go. Make this an action to all of your old hurt, bad habits, wrong relationships, and even wrong and negative attitudes and Get these people out of your life so you can have the peace of God in your life and your life will be made anew. Greater Burnett, you do know that you need God. The Bible says in Psalms 89 and 9, you rule the raging of the sea. When the waves rise, you steal them. 
Psalms 107 and 29 says he calms the storm so that its waves are still. The Bible says that my Jesus spoke to the storm in, in the fourth chapter of Mark's gospel and said the three most powerful words, peace, be still. But just before I take my seat, there was some good news that came from Jonah being on board of this ship. Verse number 16, we found out that these three sailors became saved and gave themselves to the Lord. In verse number 17, the Bible declares that the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights. Greater Burnett, it is ironic that the number three appears in the life of Jonah. There's something special about the number three. Dr. Johnson, while Jonah was in the belly of the well, he was there for three days and three nights. The number three in science deals with the quantum theory. The quantum theory deals with how something moves. The quantum theory deals with how electrons move around the nucleus of an atom. It deals with chemistry. Now, I know that sounds all deep and profound, but that's just an overplay to the underplay. Children of God, there's another meaning for the number three, and it deals with movement. Something moved from one state to another. Something moved back from eternity to reality. Something moved from being in death coming back to life. Something moved from the impossible to the possible. Something moved the large stone away from the grave. Something moved one early Sunday morning. Something moved out of an old barren tomb. Something moved with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. That thing that moved was Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Why don't you type it in your comment box and say Jesus. Jesus is the one that died on one Friday. He had nails in his hand, but he died on one Friday. Was placed in a burial tomb, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. So while you are telling people and things, I have to let you go. Don't forget to look to the hills for which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. So lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. You might ask yourself, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. See, greater Burnett, my strength don't come from my boo or my bay. My strength don't come from a building. My strength comes from the Father who sits in heaven. That's why we can sing songs like, there is none like you. But can I ask you one question? Ain't he all right? I can't leave this place unless I get a little tiny Baptist. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? If you know he's all right, say yes. If you know he's all right, say yes. See, I know he's all right. Because he's been Google when I'm lost. He's been my GPS to get me here. He's been my all in all. He's my charger to my cell phone. He's been a gas in my car. He's been my all in all. If you know he's all right, why don't you just start praising his holy name? See, Greater Burnett, you may 
you may not know all about me, but there are some situations that I've been through. There are some problems that the Lord had to solve. There were some mountains that he had to get me over. That's why I can sing the song, this is my story. This is my song. Praising, yeah. Praising the Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Yes! Yes! let go but one thing about God he'll be there he'll be there I tell you when you have to let go he'll be right there he'll be there if the world from you withholds, the doors of the church open of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with me, me the fair. Just remember in His word. The invitation is extended. How he feeds the little bird. Take your bird up to, to the Lord and leave, leave it there. Is there one you can leave? You can leave some stuff right now. Leave it there. Some things you gotta let go. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, if you 
trust. I know they don't sing stuff like that, mother, in church no more. But if you trust and never doubt, stay with me, y'all. He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Is there one that needs to unite with the church today? Leave, leave it there. Leave it there. Yeah. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never ever doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. The preacher was talking today about some people and as he was talking about some people the Holy Spirit was in my ear telling me leave them there <laughs> leave leave them there <laughs> some folk you gotta leave take your burdens even if it's people to the Lord and leave them there <laughs> if you trust woo, if you trust somebody say I'm trusting today if you trust if you trust and never doubt he he will surely I said he will surely, God will surely bring you out. Take your burdens. Take every, every burden to the Lord. Leave, leave them there. But the, let's give God some praise. Is there one that needs to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is there one that needs to unite with the church? You can go to greaterburnett.org slash join. And you can join this church. You can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I hope, believe, I pray. I pray we're all saved. If you're not saved, don't hesitate. Won't you praise God for the message and the messenger? We're good. Won't you praise God for the message? And the messenger. Blessings, blessings. You may be seated. Bless God for the message. Bless God for the messenger. Bless God for Dr. Bartlett and all of you that have tuned in with us virtually to hear this great message from this great preacher. He has brought a great message today. And I, there are some things and some people that you have to let go. There are some habits and some situations that you have to let go. It's time out for playing with God and playing with your soul and playing with your life. It's time out. Whatever you're going to do, you better do it now. 
The Lord is not playing with us. And we ought not be playing with him. And this preacher have broke it down to us. Some of us are playing, trying to hold on to things and people, rowing harder. Talking about, I can't do it. Oh, if I don't, don't play anything right now, brethren. Let me, let me tell y'all something. I can hear y'all saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do without him. Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> Gladys had a song I used to love. Neither one of us, neither one of us, neither one of us. Well, somebody need to, somebody need to. Neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye. Somebody, if I'm rowing harder and you sleeping on me, you're not even helping me row. What, what I'm talking about, some neither one of us. Y'all know about them. Y'all ain't been saved all the time. You know what I'm talking about. Farewell, my love. Goodbye. That's me now. Bye bye, bye bye, baby. <laughs> bye bye, brother. God bless you. Cooper, Cooper, I'm telling you, I'm proud of you, boy, I tell you. I don't have to worry if ever, uh, <laughs> Irma, be quiet, I got voted to you. <laughs> Irma try to get her an elder out the equation. <laughs> Praise God. But I don't have to worry. One thing I know after last month and this month, I know that God has given me some young preachers. See, Smith is old. Smith is old. He's not no young preacher no more. <laughs> I, I tell him, you know, when you have children, you kind of need to stop doing the youth revival. <laughs> At the youth. <laughs> I was invited <laughs> about a year ago or so. Somebody asked me, did I want to do a youth revival? I said, no offense, honey. <laughs> I said, but... <laughs> But I think I'm kind of, I said, why don't you get somebody a little younger? My wife found five gray hairs in my head. I've got four kids. <laughs> I'm over 30. Don't, don't, don't put me on the youth day this time. <laughs> I, I preached the youth, youth day long enough. God bless you. I've been there, done that. Praise God. Oh, good God. <laughs> Thank you. I want you to know that uh, on the second Sunday, March the 14th, that's daylight saving time. We're going to spring an hour for it. March the 14th at 3.30, the pastor, Pastor Johnson and the Pastor Corral will be here live in concert. Live the, fourth, the second Sunday, March the 14th. March the 14th at 3.30. Pastor Johnson and the Pastor Corral will be here live in conference. You can tune in virtually. We sinking some of everybody, some of Matty Moss, some Donald Vale, some Charles Nix. It's going to be an old school concert. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Huh? I'm tickled. I'm tick old Pastor Johnson and the Pastor's Corral be here live in concert Sunday, 3.30. Uh, some Charles Hayes. Oh, we're going we gonna, to we gonna church it that night. We're going to church. We're going to church. We, I, I know... I mean, we, I, 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 we're not doing the, now listen, I don't, don't take this offensively, but we're not doing the CCM music. We're not doing the Christian contemporary music. We're going we gonna to have some, some we're going to bring back the choir. You know that they got a thing out there, bring the choir. What is that bring back the choir? How did, what is, is that how they bring back the choir? Thank you. We're bringing the choir back. We're bringing the choir back second Sunday, second Sunday at 3.30. 
Pastor Johnson and the pastor's corral, we do uh, Pastor Johnson be on lead and the corral be backing us up. And and we gonna have, we gonna sing, I mean, we singing some James Cleveland. I mean, we having church. Master, we gonna, the tempest is raging. Thank you, Cooper. You gave us a segue into that peace be still on the second Sunday. Yeah, God is good. This is what I want to do. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Thank God for this preacher. Thank God for this preacher. Now, the next one, I, I, Minister Grantham have come forth with his message. Minister Cooper have come forth. The next one we'll hear from would be Minister Garrett. We're going to let him preach. And, and, I'm, and I'm just looking forward to it. I am. I am. I don't mind. I love good preaching, and I know, I know I'm not the only one that can preach. Amen. Amen. Dean Finkler, I want you to get something for the preacher. It's one up here already. Would you all, this is what, wait a minute, Dean Clemens, you wait one second. I want to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Would you just hold up your hand? Dean going to come to you if you want to be a blessing to this preacher. Those of you virtual What's your cash app, Cooper? Cooper got Cooper just like me. He got to he got to know. No, he got to look for. He don't know what it is. Oh, Mother Wilson, is that Mother Viola Wilson? Raise your hand up, Mother. Bless you, Mother. One of our new mothers. Give her a hand. Give her a big hand, Mother Wilson. Mother, you sharp too back there, I tell you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're going to let this. These preachers will be pastoring after a while. <laughs> I ain't even going to make a comment on that. <laughs> These preachers will be pastored after a while and I want to do all I can. When I, come, when I come back from this week of rest, I'm going to meet with my preachers. I want to do all I can to give them everything that I've got so that they can. Juanetta! Look out, Juanetta Jones! I haven't seen you in months and Sundays. I said, all right. Bless your sweetheart. Bless you. Is that, is that Lockhart back there? Lady in red. All right. All right. Bless your heart. My mother and father, Deacon, and Mrs. Kelly. We're going to glad to have them. Yeah, that there's that going to be some good singing there. Don't forget that. And these musicians, they're going to have it on fire. We're going to have it on fire. 3.30. 3.30. And we start on time. Thank God for that. We do start on time. I think Dwayne is my son. He's, let me just uh, say, uh, our musicians handle the music part, and then Dwayne does a good job with keeping the choir uniformed and together and everything. <laughs> And I'm not saying that just because he's my son. Come get mine, please. I'm just saying it because he's doing a good job. He's, he's my son, thus, thus. Just, he's my son. Uh, so, of course, I'm proud of him. Uh, but, 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 uh, but one thing I can say, the choir is always looking good. And uh, sounding good, and we're gonna be in concert. And uh, he's got he, he got him he's gonna have them sharp too. He's gonna have them sharp too. I might think he I think I might even I think I might even I might even put on my tuxedo, Elder. 
like Elder puts on his morning suit for a special occasion. I might even put on my tuxedo. Glory to God. All right, he said he's going all the way. Praise the Lord. Second Sunday at 3.30. Thank you all. Minister Cooper, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your cash app? Rev Coop. That's R E V C O O P. Am I right? If you want to give virtually, if you want to be a blessing to this preacher, his cash app is R E V C O O P. Rev Coop. Amen. Amen. Now, the, Sister Betty. Okay, thank you so much. Let, 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 uh, okay, let, bring me one more thing. Thank you, Byron Books. Rev Coop. I need one more thing. We're going to get ready. To, what you need, Cynthia? Yeah, dollar sign in front of, yeah. R-E-V-C-O-O-P. Dollar sign. R-E-V-C-O-O-P. Get Sister Betty. Okay. All right, thank you. Upon the conclusion of these services, uh, it is the fourth Sunday. Those of you who have not done on Friday, if you would... Uh, help our, our support ministry as we do every fourth Sunday you can do that today with Sister Betty and Deacon Clemens of course will be here to receive your tithe and offering God bless you we're going to prepare to go I want again let's thank God for this great message we've heard today and this is a great message I want to thank Trustee John King we had a little difficulty pre-service and he got it taken care of right away. Give John King a big hand. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, we're, we're doing all we can here at the Greater Burnett Church. And we pray that you are praying with us, praying for us. We pray that you're being blessed by these worship services. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to say this mean, Deaconess Clemens. But I want to say it to some of my people. Now, if we don't have any emergency this week, if we have an emergency, you all know how to reach me. If we don't have an emergency, let me rest. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, I, 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 I said it, and I stand by it. Now, if we have an emergency, you know how to reach me. But if we don't have any, an emergency, let me rest. Is that okay? Are you all all right with me resting a few days? Amen. Are you all all right with that? I, I believed you would be. Because when we come back Sunday morning, and Sunday evening, we're looking forward to a high time in the Lord. Yes, God. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Love you, Deacon. This door, Franklin. Oh, my, 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 that the church, yeah, Lord, let the church, oh, God has spoken. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy.
to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, in Jesus' name. And we sing together. Oh! So let it be. with a powerful worship experience. We thank God, we thank Jesus, we thank the Holy Spirit for being with us today as we've worshiped the Lord in spirit and in truth. Listen, I pray that you were blessed. I pray that something was said or done to revive, restrengthen, rejuvenate, restore, and refresh you as a Christian and as a child of God. Listen, don't forget, We'll be back next Sunday, 11 a.m., right here under the hashtag Burnett Everywhere, Greater Burnett Baptist Church. We invite you to come and tell others what's going on over here. Have a blessed Sunday and see you next week.